Hey, what's up, dudes? It's me. Guys, here at the program, we're having some trouble with the audio levels, okay? Are they correct? Are they right now? Is that correct? Okay. Okay, in three, two, one. Audio. Okay, is it good? It's working now? Okay. Okay, great, guys. You know what it is. We like to check in with some of our weird cast of characters on this program. And one of my favorite guys, my favorite, maybe my favorite YouTuber of all time, his name's Tim Pool. He's, I don't know, I don't know what's up. I don't know what's up. He's really sniffing. Yeah, he goes like this. I love, and I love to watch his videos because there's always something that makes me laugh because it's so stupid. It's bizarre, and he's got some political views. Hey. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Okay, that, that, by the way, is like the one honest thing I've heard this guy say. He's doing another, another Bud Light story. How is this the gift that keeps on giving? Uh, it gives, it gets me above average clicks. Oh man, that's so political. It's doing good for my life. The Tim gets more clicks. Yes, we're winning. Man. Oh. If you would have told me a few months ago this is where we would be in the Bud Light saga, I might Can't... not have believed you, but we're here now. <laughs> Photos Calm show down. Bud Light yeah. with Costco's Death Star Whoa. amid plummeting sales. It is the asterisk that appears on a product to imply they will no longer be reordering this product. Furthermore, Whoa. Whoa. As New York City is nothing without pizza. This really is like that kids in the hall sketch where Dave Foley is in an apocalypse bunker playing brand new key over and over again. That's going to be Tim Pool. He's going to be 90 years old talking about, <laughs> I swear to God, talking about Bud, the Bud Light controversy. But it doesn't always mean the item is gone forever. Uh -huh. Avid customer and core user Dimitri Vullis notes that some Death Star products are seasonal offerings that are usually brought back. Oh. Bud Light ain't a seasonal offering. Okay, calm, but, calm down. You're getting a little... Oh, Keep that little smug, yeah. pendejo. Bud Light was, for a long time, a staple. And now it's gone. Oh. They're going to mention the oh price... God. Now it's gone. I don't know if it's gone. Hold on, what's this? Kid Rock's Nashville bar still selling Bud Light after call for boycott. Oh, boy. Come on, kid. Kid for J. Rockenheim. This story is kind of funny, though. It's some, like, CNN reporters went to Kid Rock's bar, like, undercover. <laughs> I mean, this whole thing is stupid. It's, like, another stupid piece of this puzzle. Like, these CNN reporters going in, they're like, hey. We love rock rap. And then they're like, let me look what beer. Let me look what beer. I guess I'll take up a light. You know what? Look, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. You know, I'm trying to figure everything out just like everybody else. Take a doo doo pie. Let me just try to watch and learn how crap works from this lecture. Here we go. This is winning the culture war. Oh. It's crazy. Oh, wow. I yeah, love this sorry. one. Yeah. This is where we're at. Mark Wahlberg, Guy Fieri, Mel Gibson are all on Jack White's ish list for normalizing Donald Trump. Who? Oh, you love to see it. It's pathetic. <laughs> You're losing. And we all know it. <laughs> That's what we're seeing with this story. Yeah. Anybody who normalizes or treats this disgusting, fascist, racist, con man, piece of ish, uh -huh. is also disgusting in my book, wrote the musician. Oh, wow. Good for what? you, dude. Good for you. Good luck. Whatever. <laughs> what is he playing? Is he playing an Acoustasonic? Yes. Did he mention the guitar that he's got? Uh, you what? His ish list just got longer. That it? Huh? That's the best he could muster up. I think they're done. Right. I think they're done. Who? Jack White? We're winning the culture war. And there are some people who try to argue, oh, I don't know about that. My attitude is this. If okay. there are, let's say there's 50 states. Uh-huh. And 35 of them are controlled by the woke. <laughs> and 15 are controlled by the unwoke, but growing. That's right. called winning the war. <laughs> you may not have all the territory, but you are gaining the territory, forcing retreats in every possible direction. Right. That's called winning the war. You know, so if you're a student out there or if you're just a normal person trying to figure out how does the world work, how does this crap work, I do think we just learned a lot there. You know, Jack White said something. He said Trump sucks. Jack White said Trump sucks. Jack White said Guy Fieri and Trump and Mark Wahlberg suck. That's why we need to split the country into woke and unwoke states. And then that's how you win the culture war. Let's see, So in the unwoke states... You can no longer listen to, you know, do, 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 I gotta go do my shit. You can't listen to that anymore. So here's the only music you could listen to in the unwoke states of America. Did you know, you know, you know, you know, 
I am not a number two guy. Oh, uh, you gotta go bathroom? DeSantis says he won't be Trump's VP. Never heard Trump of him. Trump camp responds, DeSantis isn't anybody's guy. <laughs> Yo, it's an interesting story. It's not bad. Ron DeSantis, the up and coming young star of the Republican Party. Yeah, this actually is such a weird story because we've been hearing so much about how, you know, how Republicans or whatever, they love Ron DeSantis, but they also love Trump. I kind of thought like, okay, probably the most obvious thing is they're going to be president, vice president. You know, people love both of them so much. But I guess that's not going to happen because of the fact they both think each other is mean, I guess. But I think this is actually a blessing in disguise, guys. Because there is a way, 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 way better vice president option. If you're smoking drugs. <laughs> it still gets me every time. If you're smoking drugs. Yeah. If you're smoking drugs. <laughs> if you're smoking drugs. I, I, I can't believe this drop off. Predict it prediction markets now have Donald Trump at 61 cents and DeSantis at 20 cents. Never heard of either of them. Vivek Ramaswamy, nine uh -huh. cents. Who? In third place in the prediction markets. Wow. That's amazing. Oh. Vivek's message is moving far and wide. What? Vivek is authentic. Okay. Oh, he really likes this guy, Vivek. He's definitely not going to win the nomination. He's just doing a scam. But you, Tim really likes him. What, what are the policies that you really like from this guy, Vivek, Tim? Let's hear it. Impressed with it. When he said on my show, he thinks perhaps huh? that there needs to be some civic responsibility in exchange for the right to vote or for the ability to vote. And I was like, wow. Right. That's a oh, so he wants to restrict voting rights. That's that's a good that's a good policy right there. If you're smoking drugs. If you're smoking drugs. Yeah. In this video posted by Clown World, huh? it's a, a TikTok from Funny Marco. Who? A man, a black man wearing a Trump hat okay. is confronted by some dude who gets in his face, okay. starts insulting him, and then smacks the hat off his head. I want to play this video. Whoa. It's only about 58 seconds long. Oh. And you can't really hear much, but I'll play it. I'm getting pissed off. That's for so sure. So you got this guy. Let me let me put the headphones on so I can hear this. Buddy. Okay. Come on, Tim. Let's do a little prep before the show, please. What's this video called? Insane video shows black Trump supporter harassed for wearing a Trump hat. This will ramp up in 2024. Well, I'm scared. I'm scared slash pissed off. That's one thing that we can take to the bank. But the tendency for those who pay attention is the far left attacks everyone else. Whoa, Tim. So here you have a video. Yeah. And let's just put it this way. Uh, sure. Far left rhetoric and the corporate narrative is putting Trump supporters at risk. Whoa. It's true. I'm Well, sorry. This guy. Yeah. Let's, let's let's play this game left. This is a black man minding his own business being attacked by a white man. Wow. Are you going to call this guy a Karen, get him arrested, get him fired from his job for attacking a black man? Yes, I am. I didn't think so. They uh, won't. But hey, because it just so happens this black guy's wearing a Trump hat. Oh. These people claim that they oppose racism and all this stuff. But the reality is they don't care. They yeah, just right. want to use you. Exactly. Use these issues. And I've experienced it all too well. They push this crackpot stuff. They get violent. Look at this. It's a video of an anti-Trump guy attacking a black man. No. That's not okay. Uh, yeah. But it has nothing to do I, with exactly. race. Right. So I did a very not time intensive search on this video just for the F of it. Just for the Pendejo. of it. And one of these Snopes things came up. The funny thing about it is that it's from 2018, which is a half a decade ago. <laughs> And it says, does this video show a man ripping the MAGA hat off a Trump supporter? A YouTuber staged video has been taken seriously by several media outlets, despite some telling signs of pranksterism. Give him a break. Give the guy a break. Give Tim Pool a break. He only had five years. He only had five years to look, the, to look up this video, guys. Come on. But there is a bigger point here, I think, which is these people who do these staged public pranks and Starbucks and Targets and all that, all this stuff, throw their ass in jail. All of them, death penalty. Solitary confinement, they get to choose solitary confinement or death penalty. Come on, let's be a little humane, guys. God damn it, this happens every time and I feel sorry for him. Okay, he made a mistake. A lot of things on the internet are fake. We make mistakes. We, we all make the mistakes and we all can learn. It's funny too, because there's one part of the article that actually five years ago described what Tim Pool is going to do in five years. Outlets promoting this video as evidence of overheated political tensions in the United States are actually just promoting the career of a budding social media comedian. He's going like this. 
This guy thinks he's CK Louis, the comedian. C -c 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 and it all bears repeating. Thank huh? you all so much. You guys rock. What, what is this? This is how the video starts, huh? Did I miss something? Okay. <laughs> this is a major, major moment yeah. for the parallel economy, for independent films, and for pushing back on the oh. woke establishment. Oh, amazing. Jim Caviezel thriller, Sound of Freedom, Whoa. knocks Insidious from the number one spot Monday. Oh. That's right. Amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, Sound of Freedom was number one. There it is. So when I see this film, I'm like, this is awesome. It hits the nail on the head. Yeah. Real world important issue. Right. Independent studio. That's why we should support it. Absolutely. And of course, the media comes after it oh. because they're creepy. <laughs> and I think maybe maybe because metal, many of them have uh, strange predilections for children. <laughs> Yahoo Entertainment. OK, OK. Hold on. Wait, I need to get the list of pedophiles straight here. So it's Emma Viglin from the Majority Report and then anyone who doesn't like this absolutely terrible movie. Okay. Get, hold on. Hold on. I gotta write. I gotta write it down. M. Emma. I don't know how to spell Viglin. Never mind. Okay, this is kind of funny. So he's talking about that stupid Jim Comviezel movie. He doesn't do any prep for this, so he uh, he runs into something kind of funny here. Here we go. Less locations, more money. Number one. Wow. Man, read it and weep industry. Whoa. They say many are amazed by Sound of Freedom as an indie film from an India distributor breaking through the box office. Absolutely. Ticket sales have been fueled by right wing groups and Angel Studios has stoked its faith based core base, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those ticket sales might be a little, they might be a little juiced. They might be a little juiced, right? And I think there's a new Mission Impossible movie that's about to come out, which is ab absolutely going to make toilets out of the box office numbers. So, you know, yeah, great, great. Good for Jim Caviezel and that, that lunatic who he made this movie with. Let me tell you about some of the issues we're seeing. Take a look at this. Definitely, man. OK. Sound of Freedom viewers forced to evacuate movie theater video shows. Now, I don't know why. This could be nothing. It be, could, could be a coincidence. Social media rumors Whoa. suggest there's something going on at movie theaters showing new film Sound of Freedom oh. with people allegedly being forced from their seats for various reasons. What? The latest example to go viral online shows a woman claiming that a theater full of people was evacuated without explanation Whoa. and weren't allowed to go back and finish watching the movie. They make me vomit. Oh my God. It's the latest in a number of accounts of people supposedly being suppressed from watching Sound of Freedom. <laughs> on Monday, TikTok user isn't isn't she a daisy shared a 48 second video which went viral so i've been seeing all over tiktok that people are going to watch the movie sound of freedom and these weird things are happening like random emergency evacuations oh. the air conditioning not working and <laughs> having AC. to leave the theater the, the tiktok you just work. said in a voiceover seemingly shot in a cinema lobby oh, and i thought wow. no that's probably just something that's happening in other theaters and other places so i took me and my daughters to go watch sound of freedom today about a half an hour, about an hour and 20 minutes into the movie, we get a random emergency evacuation. This might be the best thing about this stupid movie is these viral TikTok things and all this crap about how they're trying to suppress. They're trying to suppress me from seeing this movie. Smoke. They're trying to suppress me. They're trying to suppress me from this very brave thing I'm doing, which is wandering into a theater staring at this movie. They're trying to stop us, you know? I had my Twizzlers. I was going to bite off both ends, use it as a straw, and I was stopped. Let's yep. jump to the story from ABC News. Oh, yeah, please do. Kansas must stop changing trans people's sex listing on driver's licenses, judge says. <laughs> a state court. A court oh, amazing. Uh, amazing work they're doing there in Kansas. Thank God they have no bigger issues uh, to deal with over there in Kansas. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God they got no bigger issues over there in Kansas. Oh. A state court a court judge has ordered Kansas to stop allowing trans people to change the listing for sex on their driver's oh, license. Brilliant. This one Amazing. caused a lot of uh, contentious issues there on the internet, as many people on the left are saying it's far-right fascism, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, my question with this story is actually quite simple, the reason why I wanted to bring it up yeah. in this conversation. Absolutely. If the left continually says sex and gender are different, Right. Why would a trans person ever change their sex on oh. a birth certificate or driver's license when they are not, in fact, changing their sex? They oh, are just they're trying to con affirm or confirm their gender, oh. which is a social construct. OK, so this part is my main man, Timothy James Poole Esquire. The Poole man, people call him. He should have a net 
And I still don't understand why he doesn't have a net on his show. Like he holds like a pool, like one of those pool nets that like the pool guys have. But in this little segment, he's playing an insufferable and pointless semantic game about the word sex on a driver's license. Uh, Totally useless and disconnected from reality. And I looked into this. The most common use of a driver's license is uh, getting pulled over for minor, minor traffic crap. So they see if the way you look matches the picture. Then they see if the name matches your registration. The other most common use is to like get into places where you have to be a certain age, like bars and stuff. Which is two things I like to do together. Guys, come on, that's a joke. Guys, that's this. Can we check your ID? So of course our beautiful trans brothers and sisters should be able to put out whatever they want on their ID. But also, this is just an absolute complete waste of breath this whole story and of course it's like a political scam in kansas that's all it is i i wonder how far off we are from them just removing the sex category from a driver's license and having you put your pronouns uh-huh. there and that's it that's all <laughs> oh, we need to know pronouns it. are uh, also an, another thing it, it's it's all meant to identify you as a part of the cult mm-hmm. that 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 that's right. really i definitely think i'm part of a cult because i think anybody who disagrees with me uh is a sexual predator <laughs> That is, that, 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 that is a freaking predator right there. Okay, guys, that is... Okay, okay, guys, that is... Hope you guys like it. I won't be uploading a video on Wednesday because I... am out of town. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Oh, hey, guys. Guess what? You're not even getting the whole show. If you want every episode and a whole bunch of other sh- Subscribe on Patreon. Subscribe on Patreon for as little as two bones. Just click the stupid little link below the video in the comments. See, right there. There you go. Click it and that, yep. When you become a patron for as little as two bones, you get the Tuesday, Thursday patron only episodes. You also get the weekly book oblega show where we talk about important books. The questions and comments th- th- thing where you can ask questions and make comments and all this crap. All for less than the price of a rancid Charleston chew. And for only 25 putrid little dollars, you could become a producer. That's right, support the show and get your name up here. Look at these people. Look at these, these people, it make the show possible, okay? God. I mean, without these beautiful people, This show goes straight into the dumpster. A rotten, you know, just wet, disgusting dumpster. You know, behind a restaurant. So it's, there's old milk in there. That's where this show ends up without these people. Is that what you want? Okay, I guess it's, okay. No, I guess it's what you want. I'll just leave. No, 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 it's done. It's too late. Okay, okay. Here we go. Here's the dump truck. Here's the dump truck, come to pick up the show. This is what would happen with no producers, thank you.